فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Now let's move on to the third, second time which is الفعل verb Are you with me? Brothers Brothers Verb Verb is what? Three types Ba'adib Past tense Mudari' Present tense Abar Which is <coughs> A command Yeah, are you with me, brothers? Brothers, are we all together? The definition of a noun is ma dalla ala ma'nan fi nafsihi wa lam yaktarin bi ahad al-azmilati thalatha A noun is, the definition of a noun is anything that has a meaning in and within itself and it does not show you time. Does, does Muhammad show you time? Does it show you past tense, present, future? It doesn't, right? But it has a meaning in it, right? Are you with me? Okay, what about dhahaba? Dhahaba is went. Does went have a meaning in it within itself? Yeah. Does it show you time? So the difference between a noun and a verb is that both of them have meanings in and within themselves, but it's just the difference is one indicates time whereas the other doesn't. Verb indicates time. A noun, on the other hand, does not show you time. Are you with me? Fi'il, on the other hand, is by dalla ala ba'nal fi nafsi wa qtarala bi ahad al-azmilati thalatha. And it shows you one of the three, past, present, or future. Do you all, do you guys, I wrote, how many types of verbs did I say there were? Three. Ba'ghid, which is past tense. Mudari', which is present. Third one, which is abar, command. And a command shows future. So future is this. When I tell you stand up, you're going to stand up after I tell you, right? So it's the future. Whether that future is the fast, far future, or if it's the close future. Let's go to half. Are you with me? Half, as we said, is particle. We're, we're now not going to be using that anymore. We're going to now be using half. Okay, brothers. Brothers. Pay attention. I know I put Tanwin in there. You have to teach the students that you don't even have to use Tanwin. Ah. Even, even in English, you use Tanwin. Yeah. No, it's kind of use. You can, right? Yeah. Half is three times. It's Mushtara Kumbayna Nasma'i Wa Laf'al. I have to say in Arabic, so those who write in Arabic can write in Arabic. And I say in English, so those who want to write in English can write in English. Okay? The first, the first time is Mushtarak. Mushtarak means Mushtarak. Bayn al asma'i wal af'ali. It means shared by nouns and verbs. The first type of particle is. It is shared by nouns and verbs. What does that mean? That sounds very fancy, but what does that mean? It means it can enter a verb and it can enter onto a noun. So what comes after it, after this particle, after this harf, what comes after it can either be a noun or it can be a verb. Just like the word hal. Just like the word the word hal, what comes after hal can be a noun. For example, you can say hal zaydun qaibun. Is zayd standing? What came after hal? A noun, right? A ism came after it. Hal zaydun qaibun. Hal zaydun qaibun. Is zayd standing, right? Brothers, <laughs> are we together? You with me, brothers? You can also turn it back to front again and say, Hal qaba zaydun. Hal qaba zaydun. 
Qama is what? The verb, which is has he stood. Are you with me, brothers? So the word hal, what comes after it can either be a noun, and what could come after it is what? I don't think I can come after it. Are we with me, brothers? That's the first one. So in Arabic, it's called Mushtarak. Bain al asma'i wal af'al. The second one is Mukhtasun bil asma'i. Mukhtas bil asma'i. Mukhtas bil asma'i means it is specific to only particles. So only uh, nouns. These these, what do you call it, brothers and sisters, pay attention here. These, um, the, what comes after it is always going to be a noun, is muhtas, it's only specific to a noun. And it is the ones that the author is going to show us later when he mentions the alamatul asma. What is he going to tell us? Huruful jarri, right? Huruful jarri, we're going to see them. Example for that would be the word min and fi ala rubba ba kaf lam. All of these, what comes after is always a noun. Min, what comes after is always, always a noun. And it would never let a verb come after it. This harf is specific to nouns. Yeah. Are you with me, brothers? The third one, the third one is مُخْتَصٌ بِالْأَفْعَالِ It's specific to what? Yeah, it's specific to verbs. مُخْتَصٌ بِالْأَفْعَالِ It's specific to what? Verbs. And this is inshallah we're going to see is أَدَوَاتُ الْجَزْبِ and أَدَوَاتُ النَّصْبِ أَدَوَاتُ الْجَزْبِ and أَدَوَاتُ النَّصْبِ are specific only to أفعال. Like the word لَمْ لَمْ Specific to verbs only. So what comes after it is always going to be a verb, not, not a noun. It can never be a noun. Like, Lam yadhab, he did not go. You can't say, Lam zaydun. Are you with me, brothers? Before we move off from this point, have you all understood this? Yeah, brothers and sisters, have we understood? Before we move on, before we move on, What's the evidence that the, sp the speech is categorized into three? Put your hand up. You can't answer if you don't put your hand up. So what's the evidence that speech is divided into um, three? That it is ism, fi'il, harf. What's the evidence? What's the delete? Is that important? Brothers, don't you think that's important? Hey, what's the evidence? Abu Bakr. So the ulama, they looked at the language of the Arabs and their speech and they realized that everything that the Arabs have ever said has not left these three. Sahab brothers, they realized that it doesn't go outside these three. It is either a noun which they have just uttered, it is either a harf which they used, or either it is a verb which they used. And their speech could not have left any of these three. Are you with me? What's this called in Arabic? Tatabba. Are you with me? Tatabba means you follow up something. I think now they do that with those of you who guys have studied linguistics. Have anyone here not studied linguistics? Yeah, mashallah. Sheikh Saad has. In linguistics, they have this system called a corpus. Corpus linguistic program, which basically what it does is that, you know, all, if you really are, look, are doing, for example, a, a, a course or something, you want to learn what is the common word that youngsters and youth use, you take the corpus and basically you copy paste as much information as you want, you put it in there and it will reduce, it will bring you a conclusion of how many words, how many times this word was used. So you have an interview with the person, you transcribe the interview, that, you take that interview, you put it in there, all of it. You see the word that they commonly use, and etc. This is how they come with a tatabbu. They follow up the language of the people 
and they finally conclude with what? That this is the most used word, for, instance, for example. That's the same. They just use their brains and their, you know, their... You read this whole Quran that you have, any word in the Quran is either harf, ism or fa'al. It goes under this thing, one of the three. There's not a fourth time you can read. Are you with me, brothers? Brothers? This is called tatabur. The tatabur can be deficient sometimes. Sah? Are you with me, brothers? <laughs> like, for example, the man who went and he said that everyone, I mean, every creature that eats, it always moves its lower jaw when it's eating. The top part is still, and the bottom part moves. You don't, you don't use move your top part, you only move your bottom part. Your lower jaw, right? So this was his tatabba. He said, this is the conclusion I've reached, and that's what it is. So they saw an alligator, a crocodile. Do this. Let's uh, Yeah. He keeps it on the floor, and he gets the top part of his jaw, and he smacks it. Push. Ah. Isn't it, or is this the only cartoons? That's in real life, right? So what happened to him right now? What happened here? Is he deficient in his tatabur? Is he deficient? Brothers, question. He is. We've now opposed him. We've said that he's wrong. Because after his, his cool deduction, right? We've realized that it wasn't accurate. Yeah? The, in, his, uh, after his induction, we realize that he's not right. Sah? But anyone who came after the scholars, when they say that the speech is these three, no one ever came and was able to say what? There's a full time. Are you there? Brothers. So the only way you can actually dismiss a tatambo is when I affirm something, you can't say to me, well, you don't have evidence, I'm not going to take it. No, that's not, that's not strong. You can't say that to me. You can only oppose me based on what? Your tatabba is what? I checked it up and it was, I found so many things went out of it. So it's deficient. It's weak. Are you there, brothers? And what enters there is taqseem al tawheed The categorization of tawheed Somebody tells you to bring an evidence for it. Is Majnoon. Because you followed up the Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran and the Sunnah was looked into. And when the Quran and the Sunnah was looked into, they realized that this is the categorization for it. This khalas. If you feel like there's a fourth type missing or a fifth type missing, are you with me, brothers? Do you have to bring your evidence for it? If the fourth type that you're bringing is already under the previously mentioned three, then no, we haven't brought anything new. Bring something new. Something that doesn't fall under these three that stands independent and is not attached to the four, three. Are you with me, brothers? You can't. Are you with there, brothers? What about somebody saying, oh, I found pronouns. Well, then they say pronouns falls under isim. So you haven't still left isim. So bring something new yet. Does that make sense? Is that crystal clear? Very important. Now, so, taqsimat are only ways to make matter easy for you. If you say, I don't want to categorize Tawheed into three, I don't, no, it's up to you. You don't have to. It's not ta'abudi. You don't worship Allah based on it. Are you with me? You don't. Just like you don't worship Allah on what nullifies your wudu. Is it ten? Is it five? The number is to bring the understanding close to you. Are you with me? That's all it is. Are you there? Like, what breaks your wudu? Five. Somebody says to you, where do you get this five from? Where's your evidence for the five? Sah. Would somebody say that to you? Huh? Are you with me, brothers? I'll say that to you. Taqsimat and categorization things are basically to make matters easy for you. Fadal, eh? But I just want you to know one thing. I'm really sorry. I keep saying, okay, you could put your head down and I keep stopping you. What I want you to know is you will realize one common thing according to the grammarians. But majority of the times things go three, 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 everything. How much, how much is speech categorized into? Three. How much was a noun categorized into? Three. How much was a verb categorized into? Three. 
how much was a particle categorized into? Three. We're going to go, go three, three, three like that. Oh, yeah. The author now goes into how can I so we studied that the speech is categorized into how much? Three. The author now wants you to know the signs of a noun. What are the signs of a noun? What's the sign of a noun? How can I identify a noun? We know the definition, but I want to know when I see it. How can I know what it looks like? The author here mentions to you the way to identify a noun is by four things. Four things is what you would know a noun with. He only mentions these four, but it reaches up to 50 signs. It's 50 signs. But these four are basic, simple, to the point, and it's the most common four. The first one is khaf, and I'll tell you what it means. Okay, the first one is khaf. The second one is at tanween Okay. The third one is alif al lam. Okay. And the fourth one is huruf al khaf. Huruf al khaf. Okay. Those are the four that the author mentioned. And as I said, awsalaha ba'dhuhum ila khamsina. Some scholars have actually made it reach 50 signs. Okay? The author only mentioned how many? Four. Now pay attention, brothers. Two of the signs that the author mentioned, it goes at the front of the noun. And the other two that he mentions, it goes at the ending of the noun. Are you with me, brothers? Are we on the same page? Are we? The signs of the noun that the author mentioned, two of it goes at the front. And two of it goes where? At the ending. What are the two that go at the front? Dukhulun alifi wal lab. The entering of alif al lab. And the second one is the entering of huruf al khaf. The entering of Huruf al khaf. I'll tell you what it means. Don't worry what huruf al khaf means. We'll take it. Those two go at the beginning of the noun. The next two, they go what? They go after the ending of the noun. At the ending of the noun. Okay? And what are they? Al khaf. Al khaf. And I'll tell you what it means. And at tadweed. And I'll tell you what it means. And I tell you, those four are the signs. One more time. Two go before the noun, and it is Dukhul al Alifi wal Lab, and the second one is Dukhul Huruful Huruful Khaf. The two that go at the ending of the noun is Al Khaf and Al Tanween. Are you with me, brothers? And the Tanween is four types. It reaches ten. It reaches ten. But four are the most common types of tanween. The first one is known as tanween, tankeen, tanween, at tankeen. That's the first type of tanween. Am I going to explain that to you? No. Am I going to talk about it? No. I'm going to leave it for the next book. But I just want you to know that they, the name and that exists. The third one is Tanweenu Al-Iwad Al-Iwad The third one is Tanweenu Al-Iwad Tanweenu Al-Iwad And the fourth one is Al-Tanweenu Al-Muqabala Al-Tanweenu Al-Muqabala Let's go back now. Those four types of tanweed, just know them. Inshallah ta'ala, if we ever do mutamimatul ajurumiyya, we'll speak about it there. As for now, just keep it in your mind. Just know that it exists. If you want to do your own research, go do it. Your own research, inshallah ta'ala. 
But let's go back to the four signs that he mentioned. The first one he said, Khaf. What does Khaf mean? Khaf is basically for now, for now, it's Kasra. For now. Later we're going to find out it's more broader than Kasra. Kasra is just a branch that falls under Khaf. Are you with me, brothers? But the foundation of Khaf is Kasra. So for now, just know Kasra. Are you with me, brothers? What is that? The Quran teaches that teach his Quran. And that are educating the teachers. It's better that they teach the children that when they're reciting the Quran, that this is not a Kasra. Don't teach it as a Kasra. Teach it as a Khafa. So when he teaches, when he learns grammar later, he's told this is a Khafa. And it's not the only one that's khafat. There are others that are khafat. And it makes it easier. That's my opinion. That's my personal, that's my personal opinion. The point is now, khafat is basically kasra. And there are, the asa, the foundation is kasra. But there are some branches that are not kasra, that take its place as well. Okay? Which are letters. We will speak about that in soon, inshallah ta'ala. So for example, a kasra only enters onto a noun. Never would you see a verb that's got kasra in it. And remember, I already told you this, brothers. I already said this, that when we're looking at grammar, what part of the word are we looking at? The beginning, the middle, or the end? The end. So the kasra that we're speaking about, it's at the ending of the word. Not the middle of the word, not the front of the word, we're looking at the ending. So when I say to you, mu ha, are we looking at the mu, are we looking at the ha, or are we looking at Muhammadi? Are we looking at the dad? What are we looking at? We're looking at the dad. The letter, the ending of the word is what we're looking at. Are you with me, brothers? So now I see Muhammadun, Muhammadan, and Muhammadin. Which was the noun? All three of them are noun. Uh, for you now, the other two is not noun. According to your principle that you learned right now. Are you with me? According to what we just learned right now, the only one that you can say is a noun right now is Muhammadin. How? Because he's got my kasra. You just told me kasra is the sign of a noun and he's got a kasra. Are you with me, brothers? Muhammadin is a noun to you. I'm not saying Muhammadun and Muhammadan is not a noun. But for what you're learning now, Muhammadin is a noun. How? It's got kasra there. And a kasra is a unique sign for a noun. And that's how you identify a noun. I recognize it's a noun, huh? So learning how to identify a noun is what the author wants you to learn. So if you ever see a word that at the end of that word there's a kasra, you need to know it's a, it's a noun. The second one is tanween. Okay? Tanween. We're going according to the author's order. Okay, Tanweer is the Tanweer is what? It's Fathatayn, Kasratayn, Dabbatayn, and Sukunatayn. Yeah. Can we say two Sukuns? Yeah. No, it's only three, okay? It's only three. It's Fathatayn, Kasratayn, Dabbatayn, right? Are you the brothers? It's an, in, un. Huh? Are you with me, brothers? Tanween is brothers, the, the, uh, it's the an and in and the un. But in terms of uh, linguistic usage, the word tanween, it means a tasweet. It's the sound that the animal makes, the crow and the bird. What's that? I know, know cornflakes, they say cuckoo, -coo 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 -coo. I know that. It doesn't say that, it doesn't say that. What's the sound that the uh, bird makes, brothers? Whatever sound it makes. Okay, what about a crow? Yeah, go into a bucket. Do we have it? That sound they say, no one at the iru, about no one at the urabu. That sound it makes. Tasweet, that noise that it makes is called Tanweed. It comes from the word no wala. Are you with me? But 
in the language is called noon sakida noon sakida to zaida to talhaku akhir al ismi lafzan wa tufariqu fi khattan that's what it means technically it basically is when you pronounce it there's a noon there when you're writing it you don't write a noon so baytun is there a noon yeah wa tufariqu khattan but when you're writing it you don't write that noon are you there and the brothers would teach to, yeah who teach to read they say what uh, distinguishing between what no sakina can we right small book to our father teach in there yeah brothers yeah so the tawil is in terms of utterance it's like it's a noon at the ending and in un there's nothing there it's only when the pronunciation is there. Are you there? But when you write it, it's not there. It's only difference is that the writing, according to the grammarians. So for example, رَأَيْتُ مُحَمَّدًا مَرَرْتُ بِمُحَمَّدٍ صح. But then you don't write a noon, you write tanween. It's called tanween. Are you with me, brothers? And it's four types. We won't talk about the types now. Alif al -lam. It's also a sign that would only so tanween does not ever enter a verb. You can never you will never find a verb that's got tanween. Whatever if you ever see tanween in something, you know it's a noun by default. Okay, brothers. The third one that the author mentioned is the Khulul Alif al Lam. The entering of Alif and Lam. Al. So should we call it Alif al Lam like the author did, or should we say Al? Khilaf, most scholars. Some scholars don't like the idea of calling it Al. Some scholars know. Let's say Alif al Lam. Who do you guys think is right? <coughs> Knowing that when you say Fi, you don't say Fa yet. When it comes to Al, why do you say Alif Lam? Why do you read the letters out? When you say an, you don't say I know. You say an, right? You read it together. When it comes to al, alif, al, why do you say alif al lam? Why don't you say al, just like the rest? Do you get the point first? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. That the al and the lam are two independent. Yeah. What's, the, what's the al? No, I mean the alif and the, the lam. As they like, what do you mean independent? Oh, okay, Okay. Because sometimes it's not pronounced as L. Yeah, like in Arabic, it's not like the Which letter? Which letter? Okay, due to that, so it's your, your issue is uh, the Alif there. Okay. Hey. Same. Same. Yeah? It's not a harf. It's not a word at all. It's part of a word, it can't stand by itself. So how is it assigned? It's right. The only the underlying reason is because they say that the reality is that this alif is, is basically to connect the words. So it's not even anything. It's only lamb by itself here, really, to be honest. You there? We only <coughs> brought the la alif is as alif al wasli. It's connecting the wordings together. As you said, huruf al karabari and huruf al shamsi. That's why they say we the alif is not is not even the word. It's not the reality. <coughs> Rather, what makes the word Mu'arraf, makes it definite, is the lab, not the alif. That's what they believe. And these are the ulama of Kufa, that's his belief. al Basra, they don't believe that. They believe the opposite. They believe the ta'rif is in both of them. That's another mas'ala itself. Are you all with me? Are we all together? We'll take, inshallah ta'ala, 15 minutes break.